This video provides an introduction to binary form. We'll first look at some terminology, and then we'll explore how this functions in the context of examples from the repertoire. As the name implies, binary form is a form that contains two parts, by meaning two. Typically, each of those parts is repeated, either using repeat signs or they're written out. Most often, you'll see the repeat signs, but every once in a while, you'll see it written out in a score. Um, reasons to write out the repeat instead of using repeat signs include things like if the composer wants to vary the orchestration or write out specific ornamentation for the second pass through, those sorts of things. Independent binary forms, and what I mean by that are just standalone movements or large chunks of movements that are, are, are very, very segregated from the rest, are most commonly found in dance movements. This is true for pretty much all of the standard dance types of the typical Baroque suite, as well as dances such as the minuet that remained popular until much later in music history. Themes of variation movements and refrains of rondo movements are also frequently cast in binary form. The type of variation set that most often has the theme in binary form is the type that was popular in the classical era. So very sectional design, um, start with a very simple theme that's then elaborated through a number of different types of embellishments. Types of binary forms are distinguished according to their melodic and harmonic design. This should not be a surprise to anyone who is studying form, as these are the two things that we look at in the context of a number of different forms. There's some vocabulary that applies to binary forms. Um, they're basically, when classifying binary forms, we look at three things. And those can be boiled down into the three questions that we're going to explore together here. Question one, does the first section, part one of the two-part form, end with an authentic cadence in the tonic key? So in other words, in the context of a binary form where you have part one that's immediately repeated and part two that's immediately repeated, we're looking at the cadence that happens immediately prior to that first repeat sign, assuming that you're using one that has a repeat sign. If that particular cadence happens to be an authentic cadence in the tonic key, both of those things are true, then this is what is called a sectional form. Sectional is a word that frequently uses to describe something that is tonally closed. In other words, it starts and ends in, to in uh, the same key, and it cadences with an authentic cadence in that particular key at the end of that section. In opposition to sectional forms are continuous forms. And continuous in this context is basically if anything else happens there. So for instance, the passage could still be in tonic, but if part one ends with a half cadence, it's not tonally closed, therefore the binary form is continuous. Similarly, it is possible for part one of a binary form to modulate, and that frequently happens in the literature. And it, it doesn't matter whether that modulating passage ends with a half cadence or perfect authentic cadence or any other cadence. If it's not an authentic cadence in tonic, then it qualifies as continuous. The second question that we can ask is, does the second section of the binary form feature a digression followed by a reprise. Now a digression is an unstable passage that usually features modulation, sequence, or some sort of dominant prolongation. So it's definitely not uh, the most tonally stable portion of the passage typically. A reprise is a return to material from the beginning of the first section in tonic. So a reprise involves a double return both of a prior theme, specifically the opening theme of the piece, and a return to that tonic key. Over on the right, you can see this in schematic form. So what this is showing is that if you have the opening theme comes back somewhere in the second half of the binary form at the original pitch level, this is the part that's called the reprise. And it's preceded by that digression that basically is the unstable portion in between the midpoint of the binary form and the beginning of the reprise. So binary forms that have a reprise are called rounded. Binary forms that do not have a reprise are called simple. There are two different variants to simple binaries. One is that the halves could just have completely different material. As you can see here, I'm using the letters to just be placeholders for thematic content. So if the first half and the second half are just more or less very different material, that's one possible variant. Um, that's probably most common in early Baroque music, though you do see it in some later repertoire as well. The second variant, the first and the second halves are more or less parallel melodically, but not harmonically. So for instance, the two halves of the binary form could basically use the same 
thematic and motivic content, but the second half will have a different tonal design than the first, where it'll either reharmonize with just different chords or actually be in a different key at the beginning of that second section and then make its way back to tonic by the end of the binary form. Next, question three. Does the end of the first section reappear at the end of the second section? So think with me for a moment about English poetry. One aspect of studying English poetry is figuring out which lines rhyme with one another. And essentially what we're asking here is, is there some sort of end rhyme between the two halves of the binary form musically? If those two ends are similar, we call it balanced. And if they're not, there's no fancy term, it's just not balanced. So to reinforce this a little bit, in order for the two sections to be balanced, minimally they have to end with the same type of cadence. There needs to be at least a couple measures running up to the cadence that's bringing back the same material more or less. However, it is possible, especially if you have a continuous binary form, for the material to be transposed. So the part one, for example, might end with a section in the dominant key that ends with a perfect authentic cadence, and then part two might end with a transposed version of that same section in the tonic key ending with a perfect authentic cadence. That happens fairly frequently. So that's an overview of the sorts of concerns that we're looking at in binary forms. So essentially, in order to provide a complete name for a binary form, you would pick one of these two categories, it's either gonna be sectional or continuous, one of these two, the binary form will either be rounded or simple, and then similarly, the binary form will either be balanced or not balanced. Let's see how this works in the context of some music. First up is the second beret from Bach Cello Suite number no. four in E flat major. At this point, please pause the video and go listen to this movement. Let's start with some basic features. The key of this passage is E flat major. Let's take a look at the end of the first section, see what kind of cadence we get here. The sort of texture that you see here in measures three and four of this movement is what's known as compound melody. Even though only one note is playing at a time, it's implying harmony in its context as the result of multiple streams. So for example, the bass line, I would argue, is the A flat going to the B flat, going to the low E flat. And then we have an upper line that's that F going to the D, going to the E flat. So more or less as a result of that, I can think you can strongly argue that this is a perfect authentic cadence here at the end of the first section. Listening through the rest of this, you likely noticed that here is where we get a reprise. This spot matches what happens at the very open of the beret. It comes back and leads again to a perfect authentic cadence at the end of that section. In between the midpoint repeat sign and the beginning of the reprise is the section known as the digression. The end of the digression, this is not the most strongly articulated cadence, but at the end of most digressions is some sort of half cadence. And I think you can make the case for that here. Um, so essentially, the B flat is acting as our bass note, the F is acting as our treble note, and the A flat is really just serving as a connector to get us into the beginning of that reprise that aligns with the G and the bass as in the beginning of this. So let's consider our questions from the opening of the video in order. Does the first section end with an authentic cadence in the tonic key? Yes, it does. Therefore, this particular binary form is sectional. Does this binary form feature a reprise? Yes, it does in this case. So therefore, the binary form is rounded. And last but not least, do the ends of the two binary halves of the binary form look more or less the same? Well, the only slight difference is that the way this is written, it makes it more clear that this is kind of an out of time roll of the E flat chord, whereas this is more of a measured roll, but it's still the same approach to the cadence and it's still the same cadence type. Therefore, I would argue this is balanced. And of course we know this is a binary form. This example from Box Cello Suite is an example of a sectional rounded balanced binary form. Next up is the second minuet from Haydn's Keyboard Sonata Hoboken 1643. Please pause this video and take a listen to this movement. Again, let's explore some of the basic features of this movement. This piece starts in A flat major, or at least this part of the piece starts in A flat major. Scanning through the first part of this binary form, you likely notice the D naturals that start creeping in that stay pretty constant in the second half of this phrase. This leads to a cadence in measure eight. 
this cadence is clearly no longer functioning in A flat major, and in fact, we're functioning in E flat major. And thinking in E flat major, we have a perfect authentic cadence there. Okay, so this cadence has modulated to the dominant key. A flat has given way to the dominant key, E flat major, for a perfect authentic cadence. Continuing to work our way forward, you likely notice that pickup to measure 13 latches on to material from the pickup to measure 1. The reprise, therefore, starts with the pickups to measure 13. Now you can either mark it on those pickups or on the, the next line. A lot of times when marking formal segments, it's helpful to put it over the nearest downbeat, but either one works pretty well. As with a lot of binary forms, right before the beginning of that reprise is a half cadence. This half cadence is in the tonic key of e, A flat. I know that there is a D natural here, but this is really functioning as an applied chord of the E flat major chord, which is functioning as five in the context of A flat major here. Continuing to scan forward at the very end of the movement is a perfect, perfect authentic cadence, of course, back in the tonic key. It would be really unusual for a binary form to start and end in two different keys, so we expect it to modulate back to A flat. Continuing to explore a few things since we had a reprise, we also have a digression. Again, the digression is really is that stretch in between the midpoint of the binary form and the beginning of a reprise in those types of binary forms that have a reprise. The other thing that's really interesting about this movement that's not true of a lot of other movements with similar features. As you can see, part one of the binary form had eight measures. The reprise, however, has one, two, three, four, five, six measures. So what's interesting is that if you start comparing these two, essentially what happens is that this segment right here is removed. This is where it's removed from. So essentially we're taking out these two measures. And if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense because these are the measures that actually modulate from A flat major to E flat major. And in the reprise portion, we don't need to modulate anymore. So rather than reworking these to stay in tonic, which would have been an option, Haydn opted to just take those measures out entirely. So in this particular case, um, he basically is shortening this by two measures. right at that juncture there. Excellent. So now let's figure out what kind of binary form we have. Does the opening section end with an authentic cadence and tonic? Well, it ends with an authentic cadence, in this case a perfect authentic cadence, but it's no longer in the tonic key. Therefore, this opening section is not tonally closed. It's continuous. Second question, is there a reprise? Yes, there is a reprise. So we're dealing with another rounded binary form. Comparing the two ends, this segment and this segment are the same. The only difference is that 7 and 8 are in E flat major, whereas the two last bars in this minuet are in A flat major, but we can transpose things and still call it balanced. And last but not least, since we have two parts of cars, this is called a binary form. So this example by Haydn is a good instance of a continuous rounded balanced binary. And it's a particularly interesting instance of this because it's both rounded and balanced, but it does it without just slavishly bringing back the entire first section without any adjustments. It's actually quite interesting that the reprise is a little bit shorter than the opening section here. Next up is a minuet. This one is by Mozart. Um, this is one of the keyboard minuets that he wrote when he was very young, and so there's some very typical features that we see in this particular piece. As before, please pause the recording and go listen to this movement. As usual, we'll start with basics. This is in the key of C major. But by the end of that first section, it has modulated to G major, the dominant key. So this is another instance of a perfect authentic cadence in the dominant key rather than in the tonic key. Continuing to look forward, this motive from the beginning does come back in the second section, but it's not at the same pitch level. This is definitely not a C major try the way it was at the beginning. And we actually get a little bit of chromaticism here at the very opening of the second half of the binary form. So therefore, there's no reprise in this particular instance. There is, however, an interesting sequence that's actually pretty typical of this part of a binary form. Um, just circling roots here for a minute, we have an A chord going to a D chord, going to a G chord, going to a C chord. Or another way of thinking about it, if you're thinking in terms of models and copies, 
is that this chunk here is then repeated as this chunk here. Notice how the, the model is transposed down by step to reach the copy in this case. So this is a very clear example of a circle of fifth sequence, descending circle of fifth sequence, which again is pretty typical at the, um, at the midpoint of a binary form. Continuing to explore just some elements of this, the piece ends with a perfect authentic cadence in C major. And even though the very beginning did not come back at that same pitch level in the second half, there is a moment, however, where it starts aligning with what did happen in the beginning. So for instance, we're going to compare this spot in the midpoint of measure 12 to what happens in measure 4. As you can see, this movement moment here aligns with this spot in measure 4. Again, it's transposed, but as you can see, we're taking this chunk that was originally in G major, transposing it to C major to end out the piece. So, zooming out to the big picture again, we have an opening section that modulates, therefore this is continuous, because it doesn't end with an authentic cadence and tonic. There is no reprise, so technically this is a simple form. And this is the subtype of simple that a lot of people call parallel, which you wouldn't necessarily need to mark, but I find it useful to differentiate the ones where there's no repetition from those that it's basically the same material, just with some tonal adjustments in the second half. The two ends of the binary form did align with one another, so this is balanced. And once again, we have a binary form. So this Mozart minuet is a good example of a continuous, simple, balanced binary. Last but not least, we have a selection from Purcell's Suite for Trumpet and Organ. I'm zooming out for a moment so that you can see the entire score. As before, go ahead and pause the recording and go listen to this movement first. As you likely noticed, this piece is in C major. The end of the first section concludes with an IAC, an imperfect authentic cadence. Note the scale degree 3 that we have in the treble here, basically in the trumpet, and even in the way that the organ part has been realized here. The first half of this binary form features a trumpet fanfare. This is very stereotypical trumpet calls where we've got leaps between members of the tonic triad, just accentuated with a few passing tones here or there. This trumpet call comes, does not come back anywhere in the second half of this. You can look through the whole thing and it's just not there. The other thing that likely struck your attention while looking through this is that the second half of this does not have repeat signs anywhere. However, this is a good example of a piece that has written out repeats, and the repeat in this case begins in measure 13. One reason for the written out repeat is orchestration. So if you're comparing what happens, and actually let me zoom out just a little bit so you can see this. If you're comparing what happens in measure five to what happens in measure 13, you can see that the melody originally was in the trumpet, but migrates to the organ for the second time through. The bass line is the same, however, um, it's more or less just a matter of some parts that the trumpet had, the organ now has, and some parts that the organ had, the trumpet now has. But the two passes through this material are structurally equivalent. Both of them end with perfect authentic cadences. The, the last one undeniably is a perfect authentic cadence. I would argue that the one in measure 12 is as well because the trumpet is experienced as the leading melodic line at that point and it does end on scale to group one, even though of course in the score that you're seeing in front of you, the organ treble line's a little bit higher than that. But I think we experience the melody as being closed on scale to group one there. In any case, both of them do manage to confirm tonic with a perfect authentic cadence. So zooming out to kind of digest what we just talked about then, this particular form, the first part of it is tonally closed, therefore it's sectional. That opening fanfare is absent from the second half of the piece, so the first half of the binary form and the second half of the binary form have very different motivic material, therefore this is simple. Uh, not only does the first half not come back, but comparing this spot to the very end, they're very different. They're not even the same cadence type. The first one is an IAC, the second one's a PAC. The approach to the cadence is very different, even just looking at the baseline in measures three and four compared to the baseline in the last two measures. So this is an example of a not balanced binary form, and then of course we have binary. So this is 
a cool piece by Purcell that features a sectional simple, not balanced binary form. So together, these four examples illustrate some of the possibilities of different types of binary forms. Now, if you think about it, if we have two different categorizations for the first part and two for whether there's a reprise or not and two for whether the end rhyme is present or not, that's a possibility of eight different types of binary forms. It is possible to find all eight types in the repertoire. They are there. Um, but this video provides a subset of those as an example for how this vocabulary works and an introduction to this really interesting and important form.